Nebraska, Minnesota, what are your thoughts on this? One? Um, you know, for the Nebraska man, I'll speak about the, the Huskers here. I've said it all off season. I think I've said it and I'll say it one more time here. This game is super important to not only Nebraska fans, but just, I think <laughs> the public's perception of us going forward this year with Matt rule, right? Here's the thing. This isn't an easy game for, for Nebraska. It's not, it's at Minnesota. They've beaten us the last four times. Minnesota is one of those teams that will not beat themselves. They've proven that under PJ Fleck since he's gotten there. They're not a super fun team to watch. They, they Mo Ibrahim, thank God, isn't there anymore, so he can't get 40-plus carries against us like he always does. Um, but this game, to me, for Nebraska, is won or lost on the front line. Minnesota has probably got probably one of the top five biggest offensive, linemen in, or offensive lines in the country, Christian. I mean, these guys are – bigger than you and you're a big man but i mean these guys are 6 6 330 physical they want to run the ball right down your throat i don't see a lot changing this year for minnesota i really don't i mean they're going to plug and play a running back back there they do have a new quarterback tanner morgan isn't there anymore you know this kid that i can't think of his name he's got like a russian last name um but they're going to throw the ball they said a little bit more with him okay fine but can we get pressure then? And that's Nebraska's biggest problem the last couple of years for me is defensively up front. We had maybe five sacks last year as a team, I swear, and four of those were in the Iowa game. I'm not worried about Jeff Sims. I'll make the case for him that he I think he's going to have a big year this year. But this is also his first game with a new team coming from Georgia Tech. This is Matt Rule's first game on the road with a new team in Nebraska. A lot of question marks here. A lot of people, you know, I, I know I've seen a lot of predictions on this game. We're, we're seven and a half point dogs or seven. I think it's six and a half now. I have Nebraska winning this game. I've kind of changed my, my take on this. But I think Nebraska is going to have to limit turnovers. And if they can be physical, front line and defensive line, O-line and defensive line, they, they can hang in this game. I think it's going to be a very close game. I don't think it's going to be super high scoring by any means. And uh, we'll, we'll do a little prediction here in a second. But, Christian, what, what's your thoughts on this? You can give me – you know, I, I'm a little biased because I'm a Nebraska man. So, sure. you know, you, you watch a lot of other football. You're from the SEC. What's your thoughts, takes on this game? Well, it's like you said, too. I mean, it's like me with Georgia. Sometimes you got to be able to remove a little bit of bias and be able to look at this right. and kind of say, okay, you know, what realistically can we do in it? I, I'm going to cover the Minnesota aspect of it for you. Yeah. And if you're a Nebraska or Minnesota fan, you can either be happy or – upset depending but the way i look at it you know pj fleck you know he's he's kind of a unique guy in his own right to me he's a good coach right he's a different I mean, cat though man he's a he's a different guy dude but i mean he loses mo ibrahim you know who's the program's leading rusher as well as three of their interior offensive linemen so i mean the golden gophers are going to be looking to dial up more of that passing game this year than they have in years past um so you know, Tanner Morgan, you touched on it, Chris. He's not there anymore, and they're going to turn the job over to, I think it's, I think if I'm saying this right, Athan Kaleik Manis, who had three touchdowns to four interceptions last year uh, in 10 games, and he also had a QBR of 75.7. So, uh, you know, the kid was, again, I mean, he was young. I mean, he's a young kid last year. So this is, to me, this is going to be interesting to see how that offense kind of kind of rolls. But here's the other thing. I mean, this kid had over 300 yards and, and two interceptions, or sorry, two touchdowns with no turnovers uh, against a very tough Wisconsin defense last year. So he kind of flashed and did some things where you're like, all right, I mean, this kid, this kid can ball out and play a little bit. You know, they're going to also have a preseason All-American and tight end uh, oh, yeah. Brevin Spanford early. You know, and they're going to try to get him involved in this game very yeah. early and often, I think. Here's the thing, and this is what makes it tough, and you kind of alluded to it, Chris, was, I mean, their defense. I mean, they finished ranked ninth last year in total defense, and they're going to try to replicate that, you know, similarly, right, try to be a top 25 defense again this year. I mean, they lost a lot of key pieces off that defense. I, I think for me, I'll give you my final score prediction for it. <sighs> Against my better judgment, give me Nebraska 38, Minnesota 21. Wow. Okay, you – Wow. Holy shit. Wow. That's whoa, whoa. wow. 38 points. Uh, mm -hmm. No, I, 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 I hope you're right. I have it being a 24, 21 or 27, 24 late game field goal. And I could see us losing that way too. I do. I think this yeah. game's low scoring, man. I don't think the, if they hit 50 total, I think I'll be surprised. I know you obviously, you got a little more points being scored this game, but 
I just think, like you said, I agree with you. A lot of this comes down to the front line play of Nebraska. Yeah. If, if they're going to play defense like they did last year, um, they, they're going to get their ass kicked here. You know, I truly believe that. Minnesota, like I said, if you guys haven't checked out their offensive linemen, they're massive and they reload every year. And, it, yeah. and like Christian said, they have a great tight end. I forgot about him too. They're a very physical team. They don't, they don't wow you. They're not going to spread you out. They, they pass the tight end, play action pass, run the ball down your throat. It's a very simple, I mean, simple concept, but it's tough to stop, man. That's Big Ten play, though, Christian, and you know that. I actually think, you know, I watched a little bit of their spring game. I actually think they are going to try to spread out a little more. I think so. And 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 that to me is just, I mean, we see it all the time, right? I mean, again, I'm not trying to draw parallels between too many different teams, but like you watch it with teams like uh, Georgia Tech, for example. They ran that triple option style. Then with Jeff's, uh, Jeff Collins coming in there, he tried to switch everything up and you saw how that kind of went, especially right. now with that rule change of uh, in college football where the clock's going to continuously run. I mean, we, we, we talked about it yesterday. I mean, a team can come in if they're very run heavy, like Nebraska, and be able to just run the ball and take nine, ten minutes off the clock on a drive. And and that kind of, to me, that, that, that makes it a lot harder, especially when you're changing your offensive identity up and you're putting more pressure on your quarterback to have to have it. We got to have it, right? So if they don't if they don't click early, Nebraska can get in there, get some pressure, and kind of make some stops in this game. Chris, give me Nebraska for an upset, and, and I think awesome. it might be a statement first win there for Matt Rule. Well, I hope you're right, buddy. I hope you're right. I hope I'm right. Regardless, we can get a W. It would be huge for Nebraska's season. So, um, yeah, love your take, though. Love it.